Lesson 28, I will solve word problems with line plots. So today we're going to continue to talk about fractions, but we're going to talk about fractions in a different form. We're actually going to use fractions to help to organize some data in what's called a line plot. So today you're not going to need your math journal. Go ahead and get a ruler and your problem set. You're going to need both of those today. Now the first thing you're going to notice is that I have really shrunk your problem set down. I wanted to be able to see the whole entire page, so I had to make it really small. So you may not be able to see mine very well, so make sure that you can look at yours so that you know the things that, we are, that I'm reading off of your problem set. The directions say the chart to the right shows the distance fourth graders in Miss Smith's class were able to run before stopping for a rest. Create a line plot to display the data in the table. So you can see that these are distances in miles, and this is how far the kids could run. You can see our numbers average anywhere from 5 eighths, which is less than 1, and then I have numbers that are 1, and then I have numbers that are 2. So all of my numbers tell me that my line plot is going to have to go from 0 to 3. Now with your ruler, I want you to take the edge of the ruler, and I want you to draw a straight line so that you have a nice straight line like I have. And then I want you to go ahead and put arrows on the end to show that these are lines and not a line segment. Keep your ruler underneath your line. We're going to use the marks on the ruler to make sure that our line plot is nice and equal. So I want you to put a mark at 0, and I want you to put a mark at 6, and then I want you to put a mark at 2 and 4. Okay? This is going to be our whole numbers. This is going to be 1, this is going to be 2, this is going to be 3. Now on your ruler you're going to see these longer marks. These marks between the whole numbers represent a half and then these represent force. We're going to put a mark on our num on our line plot where the fourths are and where the halves are like this. So just make a little mark like this where the fourth is, the half, the fourth, and then the whole. So you can kind of see the pattern that I'm using here. So just keep going until you get all the way down the line, just like this. So I'm going to every longer line. So a fourth, a half, a fourth, a whole. A fourth, a half, a fourth, a whole. A fourth, a half, a fourth, and then here would be my whole. Okay? Now once you get that done, we're going to go ahead and move the ruler out of the way so that we can go ahead and start to, to number this. Now this is just like any other line that we've had before, a number line that we've had, so we're just going to go through here and we're going to label it, okay? So we're going to start with 0, and we're going to 3, and then you're going to have to make sure that you pay attention and count over. So these are eighths, 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, 8 eighths, or 1 whole, 1 eighth, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, 2 holes. So what I've done here is I've divided this number line from 0 to 3, and then you can look, these are eighths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now the reason I chose to make this line plot and divide it into eighths is because when I was looking at the denominators and all of this data, I have a denominator of 2, 4, 8, 8, 8, 4, 4, 8, 8, 8. First of all, most of them were 8s. And you're also going to notice that I have some halves and I have some 4s. Well, all three of these numbers are related. I know that 4 times 2 is 8, 8 divided by 2 is 4, 8 divided by 4 is 2. So what that tells me is if I take this number line and I divide it into 8s, I will easily be able to have halves and 4s. Okay? Now here's the part where you are starting to create your line plot. For every single fraction, we're going to come and plot an X on our line plot. So for example, Joe ran two and a half miles, okay? So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to find two. This is two and one eighths, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, okay? So two and four eighths is the same as two and a half, and I'm going to put an X here. That's how I plot this data. I'm going to put a little check mark by it so I know that I did it. Now I have to do one and three fourths. So here is one. I have one and one eighth, one and two eighths, one and three eighths, one and four eighths, one and five eighths, one and six eighths. Well, I know that one and three fourths 
is the same as 1 and 6 eighths because if you double 3 you get 6 and if you double 4 you get 8. Now I'm going to do 2 and 1 8. So I go to 2 and 1 8. Oops, I forgot to put my x over this one. So 2 and 1 8. And then here's my x. Now I'm going to do 1 and 5 eighths. Well, if this is 1 and 6 eighths, then 1 and 5 eighths has to be right in front of it. So here's my x. 2 and 5 eighths. So if this is 2 and 4 eighths, then right next to it's going to be 2 and 5 eighths. So I put my x. 2 and 1 fourth. So if this 2 and 1 fourth would be 2 and 2 eighths. So here's 2 and 2 eighths. Because if I double the 1 and double the 4, I get 2 eighths. Now I've got 2 and 2 fourths, which is the same thing as 2 and a half, which is the same thing as 2 and 4 eighths. So I already have that label. I'm going to put another x right there. Now I've got 5 eighths. So I'll come back here 1 eighths, 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, and I put an x right there. Now I've got 2 and 2 eighths. I already have that marked, so I'm going to go ahead and put an x over that. And then I've got 2 and 4 eighths, which is right here, so I'll put my x over that. So I should have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 x's. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is my line plot. This is just a way to organize data, mostly fractions, so that we can see really quickly. What's the farthest that anybody ran? So I just look on my number line. Well, this is the greatest number, so the farthest anybody ran is 2 and 5 eighths mile. What's the least far anyone ran? Well, 5 eighths of a mile. Okay? Now I'm going to go ahead and do a split screen, so that's really going to make it look small, I know. Okay? But on the next page, these are some of the questions that we have to ask using our line plot. So you can take a look at my line plot, and then you can just go ahead and flip your paper over on the back so you don't have to keep going back and forth, okay? All right, it says, who ran a mile farther than Jenny? So we have to go over here and find Jenny. Okay, so let's go over here and see what it says about Jenny. It says that Jenny went, ran 5 eighths. So a mile further would be 1 and 5 eighths, so that would be Morgan. So Morgan ran a mile farther than Jenny, who ran a mile less than Jack. So let's go look at Jack. So Jack ran 2 and 5 eighths. So what would be 1 mile less than 2 and 5 eighths? Well, that would be 1 and 5 eighths, which again would be Morgan. Two students ran exactly two and one-fourth miles. Identify the students. How many quarter miles did each student run? So let's go back and look and see who ran exactly two and one-fourth mile. So I see that Sasha did, but now I don't see any other two and one-fourth. So what do you think I'm supposed to look for? I'm supposed to look for a fraction that's equivalent to 2 and 1 fourth. So 2 and 1 fourth. If I doubled the numerator and I doubled the denominator, that would give me 2 and 2 eighths. So that would be Anson. So I have Sasha and Anson. Now the second part of this question says, how many quarter miles? Well, a quarter is the same as one-fourth. So basically what it's asking me is if a student ran two and one-fourth miles, how many fourths did they run? So let's think about this for a minute. So if I've got two and one-fourth, well, how many fourths are in two? Well, four-fourths are in one, so that means eight-fourths would have to be in two, and then if I add the other fourth that they ran, that means they ran nine fourths, or they ran nine quarter miles. What is the difference in miles between the longest and shortest distance run? So let's think about what this word difference means. When you hear the word difference, what do you think to yourself? 
hopefully you're thinking subtraction. We're going to subtract the longest distance from the shortest distance. So when I go back, I'm going to try this split screen again. So when I go back, my longest distance is 2 and 5 eighths. My shortest distance is 5 eighths. Go ahead and pause the video and try to subtract that all by yourself and see what you come up with. What do you get when you take 2 and 5 eighths minus 5 eighths? Come back to the video when you are finished. Okay, well if I take 5 eighths away from 2 and 5 eighths, I'm left with 2 miles. So the distance between these two distances, or the difference, would be 2 miles. Compare the distances run by Ariana and Morgan using greater than, less than, or equal to. So let's go back and look and see how far Ariana and Morgan ran. Okay, so I'm going to go in here and take a look. And it says that Ariana ran 1 and 3 fourths and Morgan ran 1 and 5 eighths. So I've got 1 and 3 fourths, 1 and 5 eighths. So let's compare those. 1 and 3 fourths. To 1 and 5 eighths. Well, I could find a common denominator, but I already have a model right here, right? Do you see 1 and 3 fourths? What is 1 and 3 fourths equal to on our number line? Well, if I take 1 and 3 fourths, if I double the 3, I get 6. If I double the 4, I get 8. So here's 1 and 6 eighths. And then my other fraction that I'm comparing that to is 1 and 5 eighths. So here's 1 and 5 eighths. So who ran the farthest? Morgan at 1 and 5 eighths or Ariana at 1 and 3 fourths? Well, which one's closer to 3? Well, the 1 and 3 fourths is. So when I go ahead and I compare, I'm going to say 1 and 3 fourths is greater than 1 and 5 eighths because remember 1 and 3 fourths is the same as 1 and 6 eighths which is 1 eighth more. Miss Smith ran twice as far as Jenny. How far did Miss Smith run? I want you to pause the video and see if you can't figure this one out all by yourself. If you get stuck you can always press play or if you get it wrong you could always erase it and fix it. I want you to see if you can figure this one out all by yourself. Pause the video and then come back. Well, Jenny ran 5 eighths of a mile, didn't she? And there's a couple of ways that you could solve this. You could have said, well, 2 times 5 eighths equals 10 eighths. Or you could have said 5 eighths plus 5 eighths equals 10 eighths. So we know that Miss Smith ran 10 eighths of a mile. But it says here that we need to write her distance as a mixed number. So when I have 10 eighths, I know that 10 eighths is the same thing as 8 eighths plus 2 eighths. Now the reason why I chose 8 eighths here is because I know 8 eighths equals 1 whole, and then I can use what's left over to make my mixed number. So Mrs. Smith ran 1 and 2 eighths miles. All right, let's keep going. We've got a couple more here. Mr. Reynolds ran 1 and 3 tenths miles. Use greater than, less than, or equal to to compare the distance Mr. Reynolds ran to the distance Miss Smith ran. Who ran farther? So we know that Miss Smith ran, let's go back here for a second, Miss Smith ran 1 and 2 eighths miles. So we've, we're comparing 1 and 2 eighths to 1 and 3 tenths. So what do you think our strategy should be here? Well, 8 and 10 are not related. So I can't double 8 and get 10. I can't double 10 and get 8. My numerators are not the same. So what should I do? Well, I think what I'll do is, first of all, the whole numbers are the same. So really I'm just comparing 2 eighths to 3 tenths. What if we did this? What if we found a common denominator? And we did like we've done before. What if I take 2 eighths and I multiply the numerator and the denominator by 10. And I take 3 tenths 
and I multiply the numerator and denominator by 8. Let's see what we get. I get 20 80ths for two eighths, and I get 24 80ths for three tenths. So which of these is greater? Well, 24 out of 80 is going to be greater than 20 out of 80. Not a lot greater, but it is greater. Therefore, Mr. Reynolds actually ran farther than Miss Smith. Not a lot farther, but a little bit farther. Using the information in the table and on the line plot, develop and write a question similar to those above. Solve and then ask your partner to solve. Did you solve in the same way? Did you get the same answer? So here's what I want you to do. Go back and look at your questions. And I want you to take a look at the types of questions that you just answered in A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. And I want you to write your own question about your line plot. And I want you to know what the answer is, but don't write it on your paper. I want you to write it on another piece of paper. I want you to solve it. Then I want you to go find a friend and see if you can find a friend who's on this same lesson or has already completed this lesson and see if they can solve your problem. If you can't find anybody, you can come see me or you can find a family member. But let's see if we can find someone to solve our problem. Okay? I'm not going to give you an example of my problem. I want you to come up with one all on your own. Remember, this lesson is all about line plots and how we use the information that we, that we get from our line plots to solve and answer questions.